Hi, I'm Timothy Brisella, and today we're graphing a, this time it looks like a third degree trinomial uh, with my Math 1325 class. We're using the general graphing strategy that we developed uh, in this course. Well, first of all, find the y-intercept. That's easy enough, plugging in a uh, zero for x. Then we'll find any x-intercepts if it's not too involved. Usually it's more work than we want to do. Then we'll determine local extrema, determine concavity, and draw the graph. So let me write down the problem. This is number two for the students in my Math 1325 class this semester, fall 2014. This is number two. If this is if you're watching this in a future semester, there's no telling what number this problem might be. So first of all, we'll find we're using our little general graphing strategy there. So we'll set x equal to zero. What's that going to give me for y? Negative three. Was it the other one we did in negative three? This isn't the same problem, is it? No, okay. So that means the graph is going to pass through the y-axis at negative 3. And next, we'll set y equal to 0. We're going to try to find the x-intercept if it's not too much work. So set y equal to 0. Setting y equal to 0, what do you all think I'm about to conclude? Yeah, too much work. Okay, this isn't a this is a third degree polynomial. Trying to determine where that equals zero, it's not worth it. So I'll say too much effort for a very small payoff. Too much effort. And number three. This is where we're at the longest part of the problem. We're now going to use the first derivative test y prime equals 6x squared minus 24. We ask ourselves, when is this derivative equal to 0? When is it undefined? So set the thing equal to 0. Well, the undefined part is easy. It's never undefined. It's a polynomial function. should be a smooth flowing curve. No uh, sharp points, no asymptotes. I would factor out Oh, wait a minute. I guess you could uh, divide 3 by 6, couldn't you? You can't do that to the derivative, but you can do that here. Once you've set it equal to 0, dividing 3 by 6, I'd have a 0 equals x squared minus 24 minus, uh, divided by 6 is 4, and that's factorable. x plus 2 times x minus 2. So we have two critical numbers, negative 2 and positive 2. Now what? Draw a number line. And we're looking at the sine of f prime, or y prime, same thing. What do you want to test the left to negative 2? Something that's easy to square. Negative 10, okay. That'll give me y prime equals, I'm plugging it into the derivative right here. That'll be a 600 minus 24. That's positive, so increasing. Between negative 2 and positive 2, what do you think I'll test? Yeah. Zero is an easy number to test. It's my favorite number to test. We'd have a 0 minus 24. That's negative, so decreasing. And to the right of 2, what do you think I'll test? Another 10, yeah, to give us y prime equals, 
that'd be another 600 minus 24 so it's another positive number increasing so unlike that last one we did where there wasn't a alternating pattern here there will be lo there are local extrema do we have a local maximum yes where does it occur of which x value okay the local maximum occurs at negative 2 increasing and then decreasing we're going to have to plot that point in a moment so we'll need to find the y uh, coordinate do we have a local minimum yes and that occurs at positive 2 okay so plugging in our First of all, our negative 2, that's going to give me a negative 16 and a plus 48. That's a negative 32 minus 3. No, it's a positive 32 minus 3. That's a... Plug that into the first derivative. No, you plug it into the original function, okay? Plug in negative 2, you plug it into the original function. Okay, so that would be a negative 8 times 2, that's a negative 16. That's going to be a plus 48, so that's a 32, minus 3 gives us 29. Jessica, if you're making an ordered pair in this class, you will always plug into the original function. There is no time you're going to want to make an ordered pair by plugging into the derivative okay it doesn't matter what you're doing if you're making an ordered pair plug the x value into the original oh and plug it in the positive 2 I forgot about that one plug it in positive 2 that would be a 16 that'll be a 16 minus 48 that's the negative 32 minus 3 I'm getting a negative 35 oh, there and now we'll go ahead and determine concavity our fourth step we determine concavity although we could get a good picture drawn right now if we wanted to just forget about concavity we could get a very good picture drawn but my math lab isn't going to let you forget about concavity they're going to make you determine that concavity if you want full credit for the problem so here we go step number four now Step number four, to determine concavity, what do I have to do? Second derivative. So differentiating y prime. We're differentiating uh, 6x squared minus 24. What are we going to get? Just a 12x. Where does that equal zero? When x is zero. So if concavity changes, it's going to change when x is 0. There's 0. We're looking at the sine of y double prime. To the left of 0, what do we want to test? Negative 10. So, oh, well, negative 1 would do. Okay, you're right. I just... I said negative 10. You said negative 1. What did you say? Negative 1. Oh, okay. Well, I just... Um, oh. It's like when I let friends choose their lunch place. They can choose their lunch place where they want to have lunch. And if they choose the wrong place, they can choose again, okay? but So I'm going to let you choose. And when you don't choose the negative 10 I want to use, well, you get to choose again. So negative concave down but I guess we could use 1 12 times 1 is pretty easy too so but just by habit I was I went with a uh, 10 so y double prime what sign is it here positive so concave upward oh where's my graph paper oh wait a minute let's do, uh, write out that inflection point inflection point we have one notice that the concavity changed from concave downward 
uh, concave upward, we have an inflection point occurring when, zero, when x is 0. How do we find the y coordinate? What do we use to find that y coordinate for the inflection point? You plug the 0 into the original and look at that. It just so happens that our inflection point corresponds to the y-intercept. There's the y-intercept. That's where the uh, graph changes uh, concavity. So here's my here's my graph paper. Let's see. We had a local map. We have zero, negative three. We had a local maximum at negative two twenty nine. Oh. Okay, I'm going to increment in units of one on the x-axis. I'm incrementing in units of one on the x-axis. But on the y-axis, I think I'm going to increment, and hold on. Well, okay, I think I'm going to increment in units of uh, three on the y-axis. Three, six, nine, There's 30. Hold on. Mm. So, we're going to get a real good picture here. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I we're going to get a good looking graph here. Probably better than what my math lab has drawn for us. So, 0, negative 3. The graph is going to pass through the y-axis at negative 3. So that's right there. We're incrementing in units of 3. And then we have the local extrema. We have a local maximum at negative 2 positive 29. So remember I'm incrementing in units of 1 on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. So we're going left 2 up 29 right there. Right. It's, it's about one-third of the way between 27 and 30. I'm making it look more like halfway just uh, so the point will stand out a little bit better. And where's my local minimum? It's at positive 2, down 35. So I think I counted down 12 units. So positive 2, down 35. That would be, I think that's 36. No, the, here it is. It should be up right out there. There's negative 36. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. 33, 36, so right there. So hold on, i got to hide that mistake. There, there. So it's increasing, decreasing. The graph is increasing, decreasing, increasing. So it goes... Uh, going to go up, hits, goes, starts going down, passes through at 0, negative 3, and changes. It was increasing, decreasing, increasing. Here was my local maximum. Down here I had my local minimum. Any questions there? And oh, where's the, okay, here it is. Let's see. Here the state, the problem was printed out on my math lab. What did we decide about a local maximum? Yeah, we had a local maximum. The local maximum occurred at negative 2, comma 29. 
local minimum, it occurred at positive 2, negative 35. Point of inflection, that was at 0, negative 3. And finally, the graph, A, B, C, or D. Yeah, my our graph looks a lot better than theirs. Theirs looks more like a sine wave than anything else. So, well, which one is the closest to our wonderful graph? Which one looks the closest? A, B, C, or D? Increasing, decreasing. Judy noticed it once again. It looks like they're... Uh, to the naked eye, it looks to me like it's passing through the origin, but it's just the result of, look at that, uh, it looks like they're incrementing in units of 20 on the y-axis. So, but I'm going to have to go with graph C. Any questions there? Well, okay. So, I'm going to take a break now. Bye-bye.